Well, welcome back here to the Land of Legends. We're here at the Wall of Fame. And without any further ado, folks, how about a nice hand for the 21st member of the Land of Legends Wall of Fame, Big Mike Minutlo. <laughs> wow. What a week of memories it's been. I've seen so many good stories that people have been sharing about your racing career. I want to get, you know, what, what is the reaction from you this week of all the stories that are being shared? People sharing, you know, good things. Hey, Mike helped me out for years. I enjoyed watching him race here. What, what, what's your reaction to all this? Well, it, my reaction, it's overwhelming to see how many people are happy for me to, to win this award. When I saw all the people that liked the, like the, on Facebook and all the comments, well deserved and stuff. I just, I couldn't believe it. You know, when they first told me I was getting this award, I I was sort of at a loss of words. I just didn't, you know. I mean, I put in my time, but so have a lot of other people. So, just to see all the support for what I've done and everything, and it's just just great. Your racing career started by a couple of buddies that said, hey, this is just like Demo Derby. They, they're, they're banging Nerf bars out there. Yep, sure enough. Uh, Jack Howell was one of them and a couple other guys. And I listened to them and finally did it. And I, from the first time I raced, I, I just loved it. And I, tried, I finished like uh, 28th or something. But I still just I couldn't wait to get back here and try it again the next week. So, Tell me about the number 52. Where did that come from? Well, I, I used to do some demolition derbies before I uh, did, did racing and stuff. So I was B-52, like the old bomber, you know. So, and so I became, and when I started racing, there was already somebody that was B-52. So eh, 52B. And thus, thus that's, that's how Mark is 25B. And, and then Justin Eldridge is 25J. <laughs> One of the pictures that we used this week was of your first win, and you can see how much that meant, the emotion. I mean, you've got your fist pumped in the air. What was that first win like here at Canadagua? Oh, uh, it was amazing. I didn't know that was going to happen either. I, I knew the car was good. It, you know, went pretty fast. But when I won that race, I was just, just so beyond happy, you know, and I got up on my car and just... <laughs> Every time I see that picture I got it in my office, I just I flash back to it, you know, and the electric tape numbers on the car and everything. It was, you know, it was really all all built by me, every bit of it, you know, and I was pretty proud of that, you know. We talked about uh, on social media this week the wins that you have here, but your racing roots here at Canadagua goes far beyond driving career, your own personal wins. You've been a crew chief to almost uh, 75 wins here with, with Mark at the wheel, and you've supported so many full fender racers here at the Land of Legends over the years that, you know, this award is for you not just about driving career. It's about all of your involvement here at Canadagua. Yeah, you know, I, I know how hard it is to build a car and get to the track and do this and that so it's that's why i try to help everybody i can and, and when mark started racing i knew what it what it took to make it you know the things that you need to have done because when i raced i don't really help i had some help i had people help me and stuff but i had to learn it all myself from from the other racers and stuff i didn't know any anybody that really that raced when i started so one of the stories that was shared this week uh with me was uh uh, an interesting time, a period of time here that you had at Canadagua. You flipped one week, you come back the next week after fixing your car up, you flip again, but this time there was a little bit different story. You get up on the car, you do the Hulk Hogan flex, you, you do the ear. Uh, tell me, how did that come to you? <laughs> I just, you know, I used to watch professional wrestling and I saw that. When I rolled over the second time, it was an easy roll, and, but I landed on my wheels and my kids were all really young, and Mark was the youngest, and so they here they watched me roll over. It was a violent roll over the week before, so I just wanted them to know I was all right, and I wanted them to know like right away. So I got up on the car and did the flexing thing, and and then I, then I put my you know like my hand up for the to see if anybody, and all of a sudden everybody yelled back at me. I, I was not the most liked racer back then, and until that week, I think, I had so many people yell back. Was, so I did it a few more times, and everybody kept yelling back. It was, it was so funny. The other story that I thought was pretty interesting this week was you had a ritual after winning here at the Land of Legends. You'd, you'd go out there and cut a few donuts. Uh, tell me about that, and, and the person that didn't exactly like that you were doing that. 
Well, you know, I watched NASCAR back then, so I figured that's what you're supposed to do is you, you win, you go out and blow a few donuts, you know. But every single time I do it, Jeff Farney, he'd be upset. You know, oh, geez, the fair board doesn't like it and this and that. And I just couldn't stop myself, though, every time. And then so I I did it one week, and so I was here. They had a weekday show. It was a, a series race, and I'm here just watching. And Jeff comes up to me, and I knew I was in trouble. He takes me aside and tells me, you know, you really can't – can't do that anymore and this and that and so he's going to have a driver's meeting and address address the problem and so i'm like oh okay you know so w- waited till that saturday and i went and got a box of donuts and so during, put two of them, one in each front pocket and so we're in the driver's meeting and jeff starts talking and starts talk, just to get to the part about the donuts and i was like jeff jeff and i hold my hand straight i'm like these are the last two donuts that you'll ever see about me this year everybody went crazy and there's there's a few drivers that were probably that were in that driver's meeting that are still here but i just it, i just remember how much everybody laughed and then jeff did too you know and and I, I behaved after that the rest of the year i, I didn't blow any more donuts that year anyways well in honor of that story paul there's something on the back seat of the golf cart here if you could get that for me because we're going to have one of the plaques that's going to hang on the wall that you get to take home to your office but i didn't think it was appropriate that we didn't leave you with some donuts (laughs) to take with you so (laughs) i got two more questions for you one i i asked mark i said mark you got to give me a question to ask big mike here at the at the wall of fame and he said i want to know what was his favorite win here and why well i had a lot of favorites but my most favorite was i think father's day weekend i think it was 2010 me and mark we were out front and racing back and forth and and he, then he hit me and almost spun me. And I, I swear I could look, when I was so far around, I could see him behind me. <laughs> and then, but I somehow pulled it off the win. And he was right behind me, and, and he was in Rodney Comfort Jr.'s car. And it, it just, no matter who would have won the race, it would have been great, you know. But that one really meant the most to me, you know. Being out there with your son on Father's Day weekend racing, it just doesn't get much better than that. So... One, uh, I'll close on this question. I ask everybody that goes on the wall here this question. There's going to be so many fans years from now that walk by the Wall of Fame and say, you know, look at all these names. And when they pass by your plaque and say, Big Mike Minutlo, what what do you want people to remember you by in your time here at Canadagua? I really just want them to remember my wild st- style of driving, and I think most of them will, you know. There's a lot of people here that didn't see me race back then, but I think that's about it. And every, and just everybody knows I always help people and always willing to help and just trying to keep a good sense of humor and no matter what happens, you know. I've been doing it since 30 years now, and I, you know, every, people, some people say, oh, well, it's not as fun as it used to be. I, I've had fun every year, and I just, I just always do for some reason. It's just the way it is. Congratulations, mister. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. 33 career wins here at Canadagua and over 70 wins as a crew chief, including five championships. Big Mike, let's go over there and uh, reveal your plaque here. The 21st member of the Land of Legends Wall of Fame, give it up for Big Mike Minutlo. Mike, there's a lot of people that have gone on the wall here, and uh, you're one of the people that represent this class, not only from the type of person you are, but the type of person you are. Not you know, I, I say racer you are, but person you are. You know, I, I watch what you do in your community. You're a great small businessman. You work hard with your family. You do a lot of things for people that, that don't ask for extras, and you, do, you, you handle yourself at the racetrack the same way. You've got a, a, pit, a pit full of people that you've helped, people you've raced with, people you've mentored, and people you've brought to the track as fans. And that's what a Hall of Fame type of person is, is not just the best racer, but you're one of the best all-around guys, and I'm glad to have you on the, as the 23rd member. Thank you so much, Paul. I just don't even know what to say. I just can't believe it. Congratulations. We've got more from the Land of Legends Raceway. Stick around. Heat races and opening ceremonies are coming up.